Let's talk about sea turtles. If you've seen Finding Nemo, you might think sea turtles can live for a hundred something years and know that the babies are adorable, but there's a lot more to a sea turtle's life cycle. There are seven species of sea turtle, hawksbill, olive ridley, kemp's ridley, flatback, the enormous leatherback, loggerhead, and the green sea turtle. Each species has their own life cycle, but we'll focus on the family as a whole instead of the individuals. We'll start at stage one, the eggs. Every two to four years, pregnant mothers crawl on the beach, bury a pit in the sand, and lay their eggs. They cover up the pit, head back to sea, and after six to 12 weeks, poof, adorable baby turtles are cracking their shell, wiggling out of the sand, and hilariously flapping their flippers across the beach. While this is cute, don't get too attached because 99% of these turtles won't make it to adulthood. Almost all will perish in this tough journey ahead. Once the babies emerge from the shell, they typically wait until night when there are less predators and the sand is cool enough to crawl across. Once they're through the sand, they look for one signal, the moon's reflection off the ocean. This behavior is innate, it's an instinct, there's no thinking, it's the hatchling's urge to head towards the light because that leads them to the ocean. If you've seen a sign warning you about streetlights being turned off near the beach, it's because there's a sea turtle spawning site nearby. Artificial lights can confuse the hatchlings and lead them towards street lights, house lights, or headlights, which would all lead to... yeah. The lucky ones who aren't fooled crawl as quickly as they can to sea, hoping raccoons, crabs, and birds don't gobble them up for an easy snack. They're in the ocean. Great, right? Well, not exactly. It's not like the ocean is that safe either. The moment the hatchling touches the water, it begins the frenzy period. What's the frenzy? 24 hours of straight swimming. Imagine being the size of the palm of your hand, being dropped into the ocean minutes after birth, and now you have to swim and not stop. If you stop, you're dead. If you don't stop, you're probably also dead. The shallow water is littered with animals that would love to eat a tender hatchling or ten. So now what? The small juvenile stage is where the research is scarce. As you might imagine, trying to put a tracking device on a sea turtle that transmits signals, never runs out of battery, and doesn't fall off, all while not affecting the turtle's buoyancy or ability to swim, might be difficult. Because of this, these years are called the lost years. But with technology getting better, these years are becoming more known. It's clear that the turtles use currents. It was first thought to be passive migration, unintentionally following the currents, but more evidence is showing sea turtles actively orient themselves and swim. The best research suggests sea turtles detect the Earth's magnetic field and use it as a compass, a really, really accurate one to navigate the oceans. While the complexity of this goes beyond the scope of this video, it's important to understand sea turtles have a sense we don't have called magnetoception, and this sense becomes very important for turtles later in life. Until then, once turtles grow to be large juveniles, they head to their feeding grounds in coastal waters. These can be over 10,000 kilometers away from their home beach. In the feeding grounds, turtles grow to be sub-adults, and once they're ready to mate, they're mature adults, and it's time to start migrating back to the nesting sites. During the migration, a male will mate with as many females as possible to pass on as much of his DNA as he can, while a female will store as much sperm as she can because more fertilized eggs means more offspring, which means more survivors. After mating, males travel back to the feeding grounds while females continue to the beach. At the beach, the females lay their eggs and we're back at stage one. The soon-to-be mothers travel back to the feeding grounds until the next mating season. But what's interesting is that the mothers usually lay their eggs on the exact same beach where they were born. This is natal homing and how it works isn't fully understood. The best explanation is geomagnetic imprinting. When they're born, hatchlings imprint on the magnetic field of the Earth and use this unique signature to guide them home decades later. But why? Why go back to the exact same beach? It's a fair question because traveling 10,000 kilometers to reproduce doesn't seem ideal. You're risking death, expending tons of energy, and are probably closer to some perfectly good nesting sites. But we know that natal homing must have benefits, or at least outweigh the risks for the animals to adapt this behavior. The process of natural selection tells us a mother who didn't go back to her home beach was less likely to have her offspring survive. Maybe there were too many raccoons on the beach she tried. Maybe too many fish near the shore. Maybe it was too rocky to crawl across. The mothers that stuck with what they knew worked had the most success and this tendency was passed to her young. It may seem terribly inefficient that a mother could pass by a perfectly safe beach and travel a thousand miles to go back to her beach, but the sea turtle doesn't know what's safe and what isn't. All that's hardwired into its DNA is to go to its home beach and the offspring have a better chance of surviving. That's the great thing about evolution. If an animal's been around for a quarter billion years, it probably knows what it's doing. 